So apparently there's some gay atheist that has a problem with me. Well, to be 100% honest with you, I just thought you were stupid. And now I do have a problem with you because it's funny how you bitched at the Skeptical Heretic because he had called on his personal army to attack you. And yet, look at the comment section on my two videos to you. It's like red derp. Not to mention the fact that a lot of this video is just personal attacks at me. Basically, his complaint is that he made a video that made stupid arguments against me. No, they weren't stupid arguments. See, the arguments I made against you were that you're a communist, which communism basically says that you want a stateless, classless society, and yet you're supporting a country in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea that is an authoritarian, totalitarian government that does public executions. It's called cognitive dissonance. I'm sorry that you don't understand that in a satire format. Maybe you will understand it now that I explain it to you, but apparently I have to basically spell everything out for you. And that people called him on that, and now he's claiming that it was satire. So he begins the video by comparing the DPRK to AIDS, that neither one of these things should be defended. Of course, that's an absolutely ridiculous comparison. Or is this you doing satire again? Well, the first video was satire. I was taking your position and exposing the cognitive dissidents in it for humorous effect. And in the second video, the thing you're taking umbrage with here was a joke. I mean, I, do I have to sit there and flash this is a joke on the screen for you to get what's an actual argument and what's for humorous effect. Or oh, I forgot, you know, in Soviet Russia, humor will laugh at you. But it's not long before he gets down to his actual criticisms, and that is over the statues. There's a lot of statues in the DPRK. But that wasn't really my only point in that little section of that video. Uh, I also brought up how the Korean Workers' Party controls the media, which you bring that up later and claim I have no source backing that up when I did. And I brought up how Kim Il-sung's personality cult inspired uh, that of Nikolai... whatever his last name was. Of Romania, who ruled from 1967 to 1989. I, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. You pick what argument you feel you can best attack because th that makes you look good. That's what you're doing by sitting there doing this. And it's what you did with the whole statue thing in the first place, which is why I made that point. I sat there explaining why people think there's a personality cult in North Korea. I mean, I didn't give examples, like sources, I mean, for every single one, but a lot of my sources of why there's a personality cult come from things like this, this books, and stuff on Korea, whether it be South Korea or both South Korea and North Korea in case of this book. I mean, I'll link to what books I've read. I'll give you the Amazon pages for all those books if I can find them all. That way, you can sit there, buy the books, and you have a lot of disposable income to spend on Hensi, which you distort my, what I really meant by that in the video, which I guess it wasn't obvious, so I'll cut you a break with that. But, you, since you have all that money you can spend on that stuff, and on those expensive background suits, instead of maybe spending on Taliban poetry, you should spend it on this stuff. So then he moves on to baseless assertions, that everybody in the DPRK thinks Kim Il-sung, Kim Il-jong is a god and has the power to control the weather and that everybody believes in this, even though there's actually not a single source for this whatsoever. Linked in the description box to how North Korea basically is, you know, is Kim Il-sung replaced all the religions and crushed the religions that already existed in North Korea to establish basically his own religion based around him and his idea of Joe Chi. The guy launched crazy ideas about himself, established himself as the great leader and all that. Now after this he goes to claiming that the DPRK is a one-party system that Timestamp, please. That the Workers' Party controls everything. Really? Here's what I said. Maybe they also think that because the Korean Workers' Party controls pretty much all the media in that country. Of course the media in the DPRK is owned by the state, but can you prove that it's actually controlled by the state? I'll post the same link in the description box that I did last time where it does say that, but I guess you ignored it because, you know, since you feel it's appropriate to put arguments in people's mouth, 
you're ignoring it because it's from the Library of Congress or something. I mean, it probably is. It most very likely is. Why are you contesting me on it? I mean, you spend this video mocking my editing style, you clearly don't understand what satire and humor is, you twist my positions, and it just gets worse from here. I mean, I don't even know why I'm bothering to deal with you, because then you'll just sick more of your red army on me. Interestingly, you do make an accurate correction. That Mount Rushmore doesn't contain all founding fathers. I'm glad that, and that is a mistake on my part, I'm glad to see that an American knows American history better than someone who's not American. Well, at least you can admit you're wrong on something. Okay, now you move on to strawmanning me on the origins of the DPRK. The modern state that we have right now in the DPRK was founded by Kim Il-sung. That's what I was saying. No, what you said was this. Someone like Kim Il-sung, who led the, uh who led the Korean People's Army against aggression by NATO and South Korea when they invaded the country, which is a tremendous huge part of the catalyzing event that which gave birth to the country. So, he led the Korean People's Army through the Korean War, which according to you is the whole catalyst and reason for their country, which I pointed out why that was totally false in the last video. The North Korea, the DPRK, the country started to exist only after World War II because it was divided along the 38th parallel. The Soviet Union got to establish a government that catered towards their interests, that was, you know, towards their interest. And that section, America established South Korea under Simon Ray, or however you pronounce his name, and they did the same there. That's how that happened. Go ahead and try and tell me otherwise. Because, yeah, you could say, oh, well, he won the election. But he didn't found the country. It was established because of all of that stuff that I mentioned before. Hey, so you're strawmanning me by trying to change my argument. And yes, the country was founded on the war. Well, no, it wasn't because it existed before the war. Um, North Korea, I kind of get the dates of which when the ROK and the DPRK were established mixed up. But at the very latest, they were established in 1949. The Korean War started in 1950. Uh, I, I guess maybe you can't tell that 1949 comes before 1950. Because at one time, North Korea, during the war, almost had the entire peninsula. It was yeah, I mentioned that. Because they invaded South Korea. I brought that up, and once again, you're trying to sugarcoat this, and failing to mention the invasion and crossing the 38th parallel stuff. That whole Ministry of Truth thing, that reference is very apt. Now that question you have, how does this guy have so many subscribers and views? Because I produce content that people want to see, which is why they click on the video. Now see, my question is more because you're so stupid, I don't know how people can watch you. But judging by the fact that I've got like 38 people commenting on my videos telling me I'm a risible moron, saying that I'm supposed to be an, a communist because I'm gay and an atheist, um, I, I gotta say, there's a lot of stupid people on the internet. Do you not understand why people don't watch your videos where you have so few views and almost no subscribers? Because you suck. Well, I do. I mean, you know, the whole gay thing. But, you know, you'll never find out whether or not I have a gag reflex or not. And as a result, your videos suck. Just for a small bit of irony, what we have here is a big-time communist user who has all power and, and control, and here I am, the poor, abused, lower YouTube user, who's being told he sucks, and, he, and his videos suck. Everybody... Let's unite and overthrow the YouTube bourgeoisie! I'm gay and an atheist! Take that, Mom and Dad! Oh, and by that, I mean I'm just doing satire. And this was that personal attack that I took really offense to. Because my mommy kicked me out of the house when she found out I was gay. Yeah. Kicked me out with nothing but the clothes on my back in the middle of a college semester. I managed to pull myself together 
and still finish up the semester with over a 3.0 GPA. With all the shit that happened to me. And the only reason I'm back living at home now is because my mommy has cancer and I'm taking care of her. I'm sorry that, you know, I care about my parents even though they did shitty things to me. Sorry I killed your little idealistic dream of me as a, a person who sits at home and thinks he's rebelling against his parents by being gay and an atheist. Because, you know, it was funny because I was rebelling against my parents for a while. You know, when I was 14 and 15, I was rebelling against them by being a socialist. If you want, if I can find it actually, I'll be happy to show you my copy of Das Kapital.